What if you, instead of going, what would I do if everything was fine? Move as if everything's fine and see if your circumstances change. See, you've been living your life. We live our lives putting the cart before the horse. I need to get everything fine and then I'll live my life. Yet weirdly, it never gets fine because we keep scrambling the things up and finding a new thing that's wrong and actually using the illusion that I have to get my circumstances right as an excuse to not follow our hearts. This is really big. We talk way too much about what's going on in the outside and I just wanna bring a hypothesis to you. And you don't have to subscribe to it all the way, but I wanna dare you to consider what if I moved for a week with this hypothesis being the truth? What if there's nothing outside of you actually that's bothering you, but it's triggering something unseen on the inside? Even a thing that you think for sure, no, no, you don't know, you don't know my ex. You don't know my story. You don't know the thing with the thing and my job and whatever, the mandates and the world right now. I just want you to play with the concept of what if every single thing you got, I don't care if you live with a narcissist, I don't care, whatever it is, there's a few places where you'll need a little fight or flight. Yes, if there's a gunman in the house, you don't need to sit and process, get out of the situation. But other than that, I want you to play with the idea that there's emotions in your body. And there are some things that happen that bother some people and not you. How could that be? How could, how could certain people be triggered by one president and a whole other group of people be triggered by another president? How could that be? The reason is there's characteristics that different things have that bring up things in you that you've never seen. And I want to offer you to kind of keep the light as I talk on what's going on inside as I say this. Already, the fact that you're here is big. Every once in a while, someone will ask me what I do. And if I talk too deeply, it every once in a while happens where they'll be like, this is crazy talk. I'm out of here. I don't want to hear about my emotions. I don't want to hear about anything. It's just about we're, we're here to discuss mortgages and that's it. I'm like, I know. But when, so what do you do? I talk. Oh, you're a cult leader. No, I that's no, the feelings aren't a cult leader. I'm like, oh, okay, I hear you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> crazy. You know, someone's drinking the Kool-Aid, goodbye. And you're like, all right. I wanna offer you that if you're here right now, you're already on the cutting edge of openness and you're here feeling what's going on inside because this stuff can be threatening to people that have never looked inside, whose entire identity is what's on the outside. So I wanna offer you right now to just be here for whatever you feel and don't get attached to the why. Don't get attached to why you feel it, right? Don't get stuck, I, I feel it because they blah, blah, blah. You can use they blah, blah, blah for a second to be like, yeah, when that person said that to me, it made me mad. And then we let go of that part and go, okay, what's it bring up? Now, a lot of people go, well, why would I wanna do this? Just sit here and do nothing? I've, I've said this before, but I wanna remind you, it is the most productive thing you can do. Because if you just do a bunch of stuff, without seeing that, you're actually making a bunch of actions based on the avoidance of looking at yourself. So the actions you make, especially in this time now, aren't sustainable. Most of the things that you create from fear won't work anymore, right? Think of it, think of it in obvious terms. Think of it like a rebound. Let's say you're really mad at an ex, so you just start dating someone immediately. You don't know for sure if that person aligns with your soul. You're just trying to prove something to them or not feel a void. How sustainable would that be, right? Well, how many businesses are made that way? Just to like get revenge on a, on a person who said you will never make it, right? Maybe you may be at a bully, be like, you're not going to be anything. And then you're like, okay, I'll show them. Now you're making something out of pain. But what if instead we go, I'm going to be here for the part that felt bullied. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be present for the part that felt all of these different things. So ask yourself, as I say that right now, I've already probably shined a little bit more of a flashlight into your body right now. When I do one-on-ones with people, what I kind of feel is like I'm shining a flashlight into their inner child. Like I'm sitting there with a five-year-old version of them. And the amount of things people say to stop me from being with that child it's almost like if I had my daughter Vivi here and someone was like, you know, how are you today? And I just cut them off and I'm just like, we've already talked about this or she's going to do this or here's her solution. You'd almost be like, what about what she feels? 
Well, instead of just thinking of a child outside of you, I want you to think of that same thing going on inside. If I sit with you and go, what do you feel? Notice how much your ego wants to kick in and be like, I felt this before. I should be over this by now. These are sentences you use to avoid feeling what you're feeling. Now, your power is when you can sit with that feeling, and I promise you what you don't understand is that feeling will still come to the light and eventually transcend. When that happens, you lose the things that were triggering this, like they, they don't work anymore. Life mirrors what's going on inside, right? And some people hear that in obvious terms, like obviously if you are triggered, for instance, by a narcissist, if they can only trigger an unseen thing that's over empathetic out of a fear of losing them or something, right? But what if you are there for it and don't need the narcissist to be there for it? You sit there. Well, eventually they don't have the power to control you. They don't have the power to hurt you because you're sitting here fine. You're, you're the parent of this inner child not them, right? And now what if that moves to other things, right? I'm, I, I have a money issue. I got a money issue. I can never get money done. Well, what's it bringing up for you? Because maybe you're under the illusion money's bigger than you. So what would the universe or God have to do there? Take it from you. It would have to take it from you so that you can actually meet yourself. Otherwise, you're getting it as kind of a temporary distraction from your soul. And what I'm saying is scary only because we've been so trained since early childhood that life doesn't work this way. Be present right now for what's here. When you look at the world right now, maybe it's trying to get us all present. Maybe it's trying to get us all here. Maybe it's trying to get us to surrender thinking that the highest thing is our mediocre job or surrender thinking that our highest thing is getting in the right relationship. Maybe those things are the icing on the cake versus the cake. Maybe we are moving to a place where we stop thinking of religion or spirituality or looking at ourselves or doing the inner work as a side luxury and moving as if our real God is our eight hour a day job we hate. I mean, we're handing eight hours a day to the job that we don't like handing eight hours a day to a person that doesn't see you. And these are, these are backwards. What would your, just, you don't have to do this because we've so been trained out of doing this, but I just want to play with the idea <sighs> of what do you think, just play with this concept. What do you think your life would feel like if you switch those priorities? I mean, how you move. A lot of us say that number one priority is my connection to myself, yet I'll hand eight hours a day working at this job because I see the guarantee of money. So it isn't. If someone said their number one priority was you and then did eight hours a day of everything but you, and then finally every once in a while, call, you probably not feel like you're their priority, even though they tell you that. That's what life's doing. That's what the space is. The space is like, I'm here and I'm available. And you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show up to you just when I need the thing that's actually my priority. I'll pay attention to you when I need the thing that's actually my priority. And what would life have to do to us if that's how we live? If we're, if we're moving with the laws of the ego, moving with the laws that say money's the number one priority, other people seeing you is more important than you seeing you, that a relationship should stay together forever, even if it's terrible, that a relationship's only valid if it's a long time, not if it causes growth, not if it's expansive. I'd rather have a one day relationship that expands my soul than a 90 year relationship that does shit. These are the laws of the ego, right? That say the news is my authority, rules that the government arbitrarily gives us and switches around are my authority. This is, this is the time where we let go of that and we go, okay, holy crap. Is the world a real pain or has the only problem been my priority is outside and not inside? How I've moved. And we had enough 
up until 2019 of being able to say sentences. I understand spirituality or people used to say all the time, oh, I get meditation. I've done it before, which is like saying I've gone to the gym once in the 80s and I'm still overweight. So I don't know why you keep talking about it. Yeah, you got to do it all the time. You got to connect to source for real. What you put out is what you get back. Talking about putting it out and putting it out are two very different things. What you put out is what you get back. Take a deep breath in. Know that where I'm talking from is a place of pain in my body. And if you're hearing it, you have to be hearing it from a place of pain in your body, from a deeper place. What I'm saying does not make sense to the mind. The mind wants to fight this. The mind wants to come in and yeah, butt the shit out of this. The mind is like, it's not that easy, easy for you to say, blah, blah, blah. Okay, da, da, da. They got to, it's got to run. It cannot handle that. First of all, there's just a simplicity in this. Like it's simple. Connect to the now first until you've actually wired to yourself that that's the truth. How much has not been able to come to you because you've been running like a hamster in a wheel looking for the thing on the outside? Real things are trying to come to you. A different planet is trying to come to you. You're not receptive to it if you spend eight hours a day at a place you don't want to be. You're not receptive to it if you, if you stay in. How can you make alignment for a magical thing if you're connected to a thing that's not? How do you make space for that? Life is trying to give to you higher, but you have to be receptive of it. I know even as someone who does what I can to give, I know people that don't see it or want to hear it. And that's fine. That's fine. I now have learned, if, and I guarantee you, I know a lot of you have that. I bet you have that too. You're trying to show someone something. You're trying to give something. You're trying to offer something. Sometimes people that would, you to receive what you're trying to offer would be death to every single thing you thought you are. That's why people are freaking out right now. Everything people thought they were is not true anymore. Like, it's like, oh, so much is coming to the light on the external and the internal. This is the most exciting time. It's calling you to get here. You will not be suffering nearly as much and you will be watching synchronicities and joy and magical things if you stop connecting to that world, I want you to picture that quite a bit of the world is going down. It's like a boat going underwater. I want to dare you to connect to here and, and raise your frequency so that you're not glued to the boat. Your desire for someone to change that's not is you staying on the boat. They don't, they might not be receptive. They're not ready yet. That might be a thing for you to learn. Maybe you're not everyone's protector. Maybe you're not everyone's healer. Maybe you're not here to do that. Maybe, maybe life is actually trying to sever some ties so that you meet yourself. Maybe you believe you have the role of you're a giant empathetic person and you're responsible for everyone's happiness. And maybe life is making it impossible for you to keep them all happy right now. So one, they stop depending on you to be their source of happiness and can actually find themselves. And you stop being everyone's source of happiness so you can find yourself. Everything that's bullshit is falling apart and everything that's true is shining right now. When you look at the world and you think everything's falling apart, hell yeah, it is the wrong shit. The stuff that's not true, the stuff that we believed was true forever. So there's, a, there's an emotional attachment to it. But your job now is to connect to the now, right? Just this now has always been a consistent truth. And none of the things going on actually exist. You need the past and the future for those things. And we can't go there. There's no such thing. All the past is, is a movie you've created in your mind to avoid the truth of what you are. Do you hear that? That's all the past is. Right now I can go, well, I had this, da, da, da. or the future is, well, it'll be like this soon. You're just escaping what you truly are. Now, right now, you might feel something in your body. 
every day now I feel something in my body. I cry a new thing out. You know why I cry a new thing out every day? Because every time I feel like crying, I never say the sentence, which I hear a lot of people say. I've already dealt with this. I hear that so much, you guys. I don't know why I keep getting this. I've already dealt with this. Undo that sentence. It's you abusing that inner child. We've already dealt with you, Vivi. Like Kathy G just said, I say that and I'm sick of crying, right? Well, do you ever pee and halfway through say I'm sick of peeing? I mean, you pee every day. If you're, you're like, we had diarrhea last week. What am I doing? Like you go to the bathroom daily. <laughs> Unless you're not doing the inner work and some of you are going once every two weeks, just an explosion. But one thing I've always said, you got to remember that you're the space that that's coming out of. Like there's no judgment for that. And you don't have to go to the whole, what's it from and where, you know, you don't, every time you go to the bathroom, go before I go to the bathroom, I need to know the source of this. I got to know where this came from. Ah, I got it. My grandpa also pooped. You don't have to do that. You're the space right now. Remember, you're the butt, not the poop. And you're the space that the emotions are trying to come out of. You got to remember, we're here to take a shift. So I want you to take a deep breath in and release it. And remember that every emotion that's trying to come out is not you, but sometimes needs to be seen. So there's a process. You have to see it. So it's both not you, but you can't avoid it. You've been able to avoid it until now. 2021, we all can't avoid it. All of us. And you can decide that you're going to go with the flow and feel the energies that are coming up and be in your pain and be in your fear and see it and release it. And I want you to picture the water level rising of consciousness. I want you to picture you crying out something and I want you to picture a collective frequency rising. And I want you to know you're crying out is way more than one eight billionth of that frequency. I want you to see it going up. Now, if it goes up, that makes it easier for other people to purge and then they purge and then you purge more because it's easier. The space is more open. The truth is higher. Life is in a much more open place right now for all of the purging to happen and all the control and manipulation and everything will drown or let go too. Anything trying to control you won't work in the coming frequency. Your own control of you won't work in the coming frequency. Your own agenda won't work in the coming frequency. And this is a good thing. Your agenda, your direction, what am I gonna do with my life? That's not gonna work. That's an old world where you are what you do because your parents taught you that in the 80s because they grew up in the 50s. You aren't what you do, you're just now. If you listen to my content a year ago, I talked to you about following your highest, moving to a frequency by making decisions from the highest. And I still see that there, but I have birthed this week a revelation that the highest is just the now, like really a feeling of that. The highest is the now. That's my highest. So the more I'm in the now, the more I kind of become like an open space bucket that just purges all the, what do I do? Because almost every, what do I do comes from so I don't get yelled at again as a child. So I'm not abandoned. <sighs> Take a deep breath in and we end the what do I do? There's no more direction. Can you handle the idea that there's no idea what to do? Can you handle the idea that there's no more direction? Isn't that weird that sitting here with no direction is scary? Why would that be scary? We've conditioned ourselves to relaxing in a chair is the scariest thing I could do. I'd rather kill other people than just be with myself with no idea of what to do. Now, if you remove your egoic direction, do you think you'll just stay sitting? Or do you think a calling will show up or a higher frequency can finally be heard? And maybe it'll do something that you would swear is a little thing. 
right? If you have my career and my life, I've done things that I perceived egoically as big things, the big theater, getting the books out, whatever, right? <clears throat> but when I find myself having to like clean like some mediocre piece of trash and like going, that doesn't count though, this isn't a thing. Like taking this trash and doing that doesn't count. That's not something that matters. I don't see how I'm going to get paid for this. I don't, there's no reason for this. Meanwhile, the now is going, I want you to pick up that trash. Show me that this is just as significant as your big vision of your stupid company you're going to do. Like, can this matter? Then you get present and you can hear the now frequency. <clears throat> and then it'll tell you a next thing. Right? It'll say, now go over here. Now just do this thing. Now take your daughter to the park and you're getting present. Now you suddenly are open and you'll feel a magical moment start to happen. And you'll notice that there's really no lack on the external. Like that part of you that goes, what do we do about money? Needs a belief that there's a future to be in fear because most of us have enough for the day. And if we don't, we have enough on a credit card. We even have money we don't have for the day, right? You have something. And if you don't, maybe it's going, I need you to surrender that outside and get here and find the illusion of lack versus that you're in lack. It's an illusion. And get here. Man, you would be blown away by how much will happen for you if you just get all the way fine with now. So much is trying to come to you if you allow yourself to receive the now. There's nothing wrong. You need the future to be scared about what's going on. But you're not including that the future includes breakthroughs, revelations, and things that you think are coming in a month totally be different. It'll be different. You're not including all the shit on the way to the thing that you're worried about. I got to figure out in two months if I'm going to talk to that person. Dude, you're going to have 500 breakthroughs in the next hour. Don't be so caught in that thing in the future. Oh, the government announced they're going to do this thing, blah, blah, blah. Dude, that's like months away. How much awakening is going to happen on the way to that? Are, are, do you, are, are you, that's just a timeline that doesn't include all the shit on the way. That's all bullshit. Surrender your fear of the future because you're forgetting all the shit that happens on the way to that. And instead, ask yourself this. If nothing was wrong, what would I do? If I didn't have to, be there for someone else. If I didn't have to make sure everyone else isn't mad at me, if I wasn't chasing money, if I wasn't doing, well, let me ask you this question. If you weren't figuring out what to do about the world, the government, other people, whatever, what would you do right now? In fact, I'll ask you that and you can put in the chat, what would you do? If nothing is wrong, if, if nothing was wrong in my life, what would you do? And the, the ironic thing is most people move as if something's wrong in their life so they're actually screaming, I want more of it. You're living in the world of something's wrong. If you live in a pond of piranhas, you're going to get bit by piranhas. I'm like, let's get out of the pond. And you're like, no, I, it's this pond, Kyle. This is the problem. You keep getting into it. I'm like, I know. Stop going into the pond of piranhas. There's a whole world outside of it. Yeah, but there's piranhas in there that'll be really mad if I leave them. You're going to leave them. And in a few minutes, you're going to forget they exist. There's a frequency of people and world waiting for you to stop getting back into the pond. Stop going into the pond. And the pond for some people could be CNN. The pond for some people could be the phone a thousand times a day. The pond could be, yeah, but I got to make sure all these people are happy. Yeah, but I can't abandon this person. I, yeah, but I got to make sure that. Yeah, but I got to check Facebook all day. Yeah, but I got to. What's yours? I'll ask you first. What would you do if none of that was existing? Because maybe your problem is in the pond of piranhas that you seem to be addicted to because your childhood was a pond of piranhas. This feels like familiar. This is what I associate as home. I don't know what I am without my home. Meanwhile, it's a pond of piranhas. <clears throat> so if I pull the chat up and I say, what would you do? I'm going to ask you guys, what would you do if you left the pond of piranhas? 
what would be the, the truest you that you can feel? Nothing. Cultivate the awareness of presence in my heart. Rest. Uh, create without any questioning of it. All this I love, but it makes me feel like I'd be irresponsible with the things that I'm responsible for. So you have a belief of responsibility, and that's your pond of piranhas. And you tie it to something. If you're responsible for something, Kathy G, if you don't do what you're responsible for to the trauma in your body, what happens to you? That's my question for you. If I don't do what I'm responsible for, then in my childhood, when I didn't do what I was responsible for, my mom walked out on me. My dad yelled at me. I was hit. This is the tie, right? I'm responsible because we, and you also wire, weirdly, you wire responsibility only exists in the pond of piranhas. Isn't it weird you don't go, it's responsible to leave the pond of piranhas. It's responsible to move to a higher frequency. We somehow tie responsibility to the opposite of God. I'd love to connect with source, but I got to be responsible. When is that not responsible to connect with source? That actually is responsible. Travel to nature, all that is, be still, yoga, great plant food, walk in the park. I'd start dating. Not for me. It's not piranhas. I'm just so pissed. <laughs> You're pissed. Who's pissed? The only person that's pissed is your inner child. You in the now is just sitting in a chair. You're not pissed. The pattern's pissed. It's been unseen the entire time. Kathy says, oh my God. Good. We just had a breakthrough there. Kendall says, meditate and breathe. I'd love myself more. Now, what if you, instead of going, what would I do if everything was fine? Move as if everything's fine and see if your circumstances change. See, you've been living your life. We live our lives putting the cart before the horse. I need to get everything fine and then I'll live my life. Yet weirdly, it never gets fine because we keep scrambling the things up and finding a new thing that's wrong and actually using the illusion that I have to get my circumstances right as an excuse to not follow our hearts. I got to get everything the right way. No, you're just scared to follow your heart because it would be death to the you who grew up in your house. It would be death to that you're your parents' kid. Now you're God's kid. It would be death to the idea that you're just the story of what your unconscious parents made you. You're actually this flowing magical thing, but you don't know what's on the other side of that. But I swear to God, it's the greatest thing in the world. No fear. I feel the opposite. I've only been doing what I want for a year and I find myself bored with it. That's because it's not what you want. Jeremy, I actually know you. And I, I think that you have a, what you believe you want, but you're actually living at a higher frequency than that. Meaning like there's your what you want has a lot of achievement in it, but you are really in a oneness frequency. So the you that's getting bored is because you keep kind of avoiding the now and thinking that you're still a separate self that needs to achieve things. But if you allow yourself to be present for the board and stop chasing some achievement that you think is what you want, most people's thinking of what they want, like they're my 10 on a scale of one to 10 is actually their eight. And the truest self is, is a 10. I'll tell you a story of someone I was working with recently who they were talking about wanting to get their script out. They had a script and I said, well, getting that out, what would that be? And they said a 10. And I said, if all your circumstances were fine and everything was fine and money wasn't an issue, what would you do? And they said, I'd, I'd go visit my mom in Florida. And I said, that's your 10. And I could feel the emotion in my body. It's, a, it's an easier step. I could feel that's actually a 10. And we all have that. A yeah, but can show up, but we have that. I would go do this thing, but the thing that we thought we were going to do, I'd get the script out first. You can feel it's actually the, the real 10 makes you want to cry and it's simpler and it has freedom in it. And it would actually kill off a ton of patterns that, that think they have to do. A lot of people's 10 is actually an eight. It's what I need to do so my parents are proud of me. It's what I was taught I need to do. It's what I should do. 
that's an eight. And some of us need to go achieve that so they see it's not the answer. So now, if I ask you right now, if you could do, have, be anything and all your circumstances were fine, what would you do that's like the kind of, it doesn't have that necessarily same outcome that you can see from here. It just opens your heart and feels scary as hell and makes you want to cry. Alyssa says, sing. What if you don't know? I would motivate others. Learn to dance and play music. Go to hot springs. Write a book. I'm so tired of being alone, isolated, and lonely. It makes me not care about anything. Nothing else matters. Your judgment of alone is trying to come to the surface. You have a judgment of being alone. And it's going to continue until you accept it. Some people will be like, maybe I, I, maybe I just am supposed to be alone forever. You accepting that is freeing. That doesn't mean you actually will be, but life's trying to get you to stop having all of your egoic rules about what's supposed to happen and get you at peace with everything. We're never aiming for those things, but how much more powerful are you if you're okay with it? Yeah, I might die when I do that, but it's my highest calling. If you can get okay with death, first of all, you probably lower the chances you'll die, but second, you'll be you. I mean, Martin Luther King probably had to deal with, I might die, but he found a love in him that was so powerful that he became who we know as Martin Luther King. Because all fears are fine. Can, what is coming up? What's coming up for any of you? What is that? I'm scared that I'll be lonely. There's no such thing. You just don't believe there's source. There's no such thing as lonely. There's just, here's what lonely is. Are you ready? Lonely is you're in the now and your mind is constantly avoiding your inner child in a constant nothing quest for the answer outside of you. That's what creates loneliness and that's what creates boredom. Do you hear that? Now, Pat just wrote and said, you need people. Cart before the horse. I want to dare you to defend. You need the now more. You need the now and bring that to people. If you need people codependently, life is going to take them from you. In fact, how many times have you been codependent on someone and hoped that they'd see you and get you? And weirdly, it didn't work. It's so amazing how well the universe works. Everything that doesn't work. So one person just said, I've always been alone. And you've been judging it. I've always been alone. And you've been thinking, how do I get out of it? I've always been alone. And you thought, what's the next step? I've always been alone. And you thought, when do I create a new business? <sighs> Can you be okay with this now? And the voice that says whatever you say, there's a voice in you that goes like, yeah, but I need people. Be there for that. Be a person for that voice. There's two of you. Don't chase people to avoid your inner child. What would you be like if you were whole as is and you brought the wholeness to other whole people versus keeping a codependency as an excuse to avoid seeing your inner child. Deep breath in and release it. Isn't it weird that just sitting here now brings up all of this shit? Why is it so scary to sit here? I mean, how many, this is our life. This is, we get on this planet and we're you know, sitting here like this, like, like I gotta do, I can't just be here. You can be here. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. Let's see if we can go to some questions here. <clears throat> 